Yes, it's April, uh, last days of April, and I'm driving around in my car to see if I can find some road deers. I'm also looking for Robux. Uh, 10th of August is the official start of the Robux season in Norway. Uh, and already I can see some bucks uh, making their territories and I'm just curious to see uh, what type of bucks uh, yeah what types are walking around here. And I want to see how big they are. Uh, last season, I yeah, I didn't shoot any big bucks. Uh, it's not smart to only shoot big bucks. You have to yeah have a you have to think through uh, your plan and how you want your population of roaders to grow. So. We're not just shooting big bucks in this area. And hopefully, when 10th of August is here, I have managed to find the, the best buck to, to take out. So, yeah, I just had to drive up. Drive around and see what is walking around in my woods. I had big expectations for the season of 2018, especially the Robux season. And like the years before, I had done my pre-season scouting and picked out some bucks to take. The morning of August 10 was the start of my wettest hunting season ever. One of the bucks that I had scouted out for the season met me early that morning. And again, like the year before, the rut was almost done for the biggest bucks. Nevertheless, if you don't blow your call, you never know. So I tried to call and I had him at 250 meters. But as the buck heard my calling, he just kept watching his dog and in the end he flew her direction. I ended up with an awesome hide and seek and I stalked the last meters at him. Yeah, so it's the first day of buck, uh, robuck season and yeah, this was a truly amazing uh, uh, situation. Yeah, I tried some calling but it, he didn't respond, he was 
too busy following the dog. Uh, we had to think about the population too and taking out old bucks. Uh, that's always good for the population. So new, maybe bigger and nicer bucks can come into the terrain and uh, spread their genes uh, further into the future. So, oh, this is pretty amazing. Welcome to another episode of The Huntsman, and we're absolutely thrilled that you guys took time out of your busy evenings to join us. As you can see, it was well worth it, because Christian, the Viking from Norway, is hitting the fields going after roe deer during the peak of their rut. Now the beauty of this is, it's August. So as we're sitting back at the States, checking our thumb drives, twiddling our thumbs, looking at SD cards and trying to catch a glimpse of that big one, Christian's already taking them down. So when we looked at the overall concept of the Huntsman, he fit in perfectly. This was able to kill some time during the summer and showcase a Huntsman in Norway. At the same time though, Paul Wauver was starting to gear up and we had a conference call and he said, hey guys, I have this two acre property, backyard buck hunting. I think there's a nine point I could get. And we were all like, well, what's the size of him? And Paul's like, I'm not sure he's right on the cusp, but I think if I time it right, I could get out there and harvest him. So, me, always wanting more footage, and us not sure where the season was going to go, we thought it'd be a safe idea to get out there and try to get him if he could. So let's join Paul as he goes for a Delaware Backyard Buck. Oh, hey everybody, it's, uh, it's towards the end of September right now. It's uh, evening hunt got in late again as usual seems to be my common story here but uh, just a quick interview before I get settled in here it's about 68 degrees we got a northeast wind I'm hunting this same knob it's my third time hunting the stand this year um, I'm hunting this knob that sits up on top and there's a power line that runs basically north and south there's a road behind me the, the guy that lets me hunt's house is about 100 yards behind me here maybe 150 yards and there's a creek and then a power line. And this knob is a spot where they cross through quite a bit. So a little bit of sprinkles in the, in the air here, not much, cloudy, 68, northeast wind, blowing my scent right back to the, to the landowner's house. So I'm in a good position here from a wind standpoint. So uh, there's about a one, 115 class nine point that uh, may tempt me. You know, there's not a ton of big deer in this area, so for for him, I think he's one of the bigger deer in this area, so might be tempted. So just wanted to check in and get back to you, and uh, or I'll get back to you. Hopefully, get some on camera tonight. So, all right, check you later. I got this nine point buck that I talked about in the, in the uh, interview. Came in about. 40 yards, he's still hanging out about 50 yards. I can't decide, I don't think he's a shooter. He's, he's right there. I got a toe underneath of me right now. The sons of Fall Staff and Cast proudly work with the finest in the industry. German Precision Optics, tough, technical, 
Brilliant. Hoyt bows. Get serious, get Hoyt. Badlands backpacks. Become a hide and seek master. Victory archery. The carbon arrow experts. Fourth arrow. When precision, strength, and performance are everything. miles from the spot. September two. Late September's always been a good day for me. Alright, I just got out of the stand. It's about 5.30. It's been a half an hour since I shot him. I think I made a really good hit on him. I can see the arrow over there from the tree stand. It was full of blood. So um, I'm going to leave all my stuff here at the base of the tree and um, go to the truck, get a couple of things, pick up a blood trail, hopefully find this deer and get out of here before it gets dark. That would be, that would be awesome. It's 5.30 right now, so we'll see what happens and uh, we'll get back to you. All right, that looks pretty good. Looks really good, actually. All right, I'm at the spot where I saw him stop and stand for like maybe... 15 seconds and you can see this is where he was pumping some blood out right here and I can see his tracks heading down there's more blood there and uh, let's get on this it's actually starting to rain so I'm not going to waste a lot of time trying to uh, trying to go slow there's more blood there Looking good. More blood here. You can see where he tore it up the ground right here. This is where for him coming through. Man, look at the trails in here. Holy, there's more blood there. Oh, here we go. I went to the right here. go gets really oh there he is oh nice awesome sweet that was easy love it when it's easy all right yeah not a bad buck that's meat in the pot right there great look at that not a big buck but I'll uh, I'll take it the first, first deer of the 2018 season, Delaware, state of Delaware, really close to the Maryland line, but this was shot in Delaware, so he's going to get tagged, and oh man, that's uh, a lot of thick briars in here. It's too nice to <laughs> walking through thorns, but that's the way it goes. Yeah, he's all right. It's, uh, it's raining. I'm going to... Uh, Get this guy cut up, cut him out, and uh, soybean field right here. I want to get him over there, and uh, I'll be able to pull my truck right into the edge of that, I think, and get him loaded. So, not a bad deal overall. So, 
All right, man, end of September. I seem to always have some good luck in the end of September. Last year I shot the 144 in Cecil County, so this is uh, right next to Cecil County in Newcastle County, Delaware, so I'm gonna sign off here and get this guy to the butcher shop, all right? Thanks. So in, in Delaware and Maryland, we have to put just a field tag on the animal. Name, address, you know, date, county, things like that. And then uh, you've got 24 hours to call the state, get a confirmation number. And you'll need a confirmation number before you take it to a, a deer process, processor, which is what I do. When I was little, I used to process my own deer. Now at this age, it just takes a lot of time. And that part of it I don't enjoy as much. I enjoy the benefits of shooting a deer, having it in my freezer, but spending the time to debone them and stake them out and make burger out of them, it's just too much for me and I'd just rather pay somebody to do it. So putting the field tag on it now, gonna get them gutted out and get them to the processor and get a confirmation number for this deer. So go get back to you. Today I think I will try a spot that I haven't tried before. Uh, yeah, if I if I get a good situation uh, on the calling night, I probably will try to shoot a young buck too. Uh, if I get the chance, just to, uh, yeah, make the different ages uh, square. We can't have too many youngsters, and we can't. Can't have too many older bucks either, so I'm really looking forward to this night. It's the first night without rain in many days, so yeah. It's 22nd of August. Uh, yeah, it's 18:05 uh, o'clock, so it's perfect time for some buck hunting. Let's see. So it's 22nd of August and uh, yeah, we had some rainy days in Norway lately, especially here in the middle of Norway. So as you can hear I have some uh, plastic around my camera just in case we were getting some rain tonight. Uh, I'm going into a new terrain uh, tonight. And, uh, I can see some of the sun, but uh, I think there's rain in the air, so I better get started. Uh, and I think I will try to be quiet when I'm on my spot, so uh, yeah, let's see what's happening. Yeah, so I found myself a pretty good, good spot here. Uh, and I think I will try to. Uh, yeah, I'll start with the call. I have this. It's a close in game call, a robot call. Yeah, called in some bucks on this one, so it's late. Uh, it might not work, but let's let's see. Maybe we're lucky not.
greater than my calling, so. <laughs> cool. Let's go and look. Take a look at it. Because it's late uh, into the rut. Almost everywhere the bucks are done with the rut, so I just thought about this new place. Uh, I have never hunted here, and I don't know about the population, but uh, yeah, it was a it was an awesome situation. Uh, I called and I spotted on him for yeah. I saw him at 300 meters approximately and he responded immediately to my call so I decided to okay if this guy comes all the way in I will take him uh, the older bucks and the younger bucks they didn't they don't get anything uh, they don't get lucky with the dose if you know what I mean so that could be one of the reasons why the buck came in so so fast but he he was a smart one uh, I didn't see him before he was yeah just inside the woods here yeah. I had to turn turn all the way around to, to get him nice buck I like it so it's a good way wait actually so yeah stay tuned guys And they think I'm crazy. I got in an argument with a guy last week. So there's no elk in Pennsylvania out about you. I filmed one, man. No one believes me. I almost drove back to Cleveland. If it wasn't for filming for Sons of Paul, I would have drove back. If I was just here filming for my own content needs, uh, I would have left. But uh, I felt like I had to push myself a little bit to get more, and I'm so glad that I did. It is quite the hike up to the top of this hill, especially when you're carrying a bunch of gear, which could be the case if you're hunting or shooting wildlife, photography or video. That's not what I'm here for. I got enough cows. I gotta go try to find a bull. Oh, I heard first bugle 
of the year for me. Came over the hills. I think the microphone might have picked it up. I'm not sure. I am absolutely pumped at this point in the show for a couple of reasons. One, we're at episode three and we have several animals taken. Paul was able to get that elusive Delaware backyard buck and Christian was able to take two roe deer. There was also a few that he didn't get on camera. It was an incredibly rainy season and it was just too much of a challenge, but he had a successful year and we were excited that he was willing to share it with us. Beyond that, you just got introduced to a trailer from Mark Voltovsky. Now this guy is probably one of the most purest that we have on the show. And that's because he's not even really hunting this year. He is out in the woods, as you see, braving the elements to capture the resurgence of Rocky Mountain elk within Pennsylvania. And I know what you're thinking, there's elk in Pennsylvania, which is exactly why you should tune in next week and learn more about his passion and what he has going on. We're still not done with Nick Ridley and his beloved dog, Ted. So a lot more is coming at you. We hope that you'll tune in next Monday at eight. And until then, I'm Joel Port with Sons of Fall, where we're wishing you a safe and happy season.